Hi everybody, it's Erin from The Impatient Gardener. I just wanted to quickly show you three plants that have been doing amazing in my garden this year that I'm just really happy with everything they've done. The first one is actually right here. This is um, Verbena bonariensis meteor shower. It's a proven winter's plant and what it is, is a short version of the typical Verbena bonariensis. Um, which I have planted in a couple of the containers. I grew that one from seed. Um, there's a couple nice things about this plant. One, it doesn't reseed as readily as the other ones. Now, I actually wouldn't mind it to reseed because I like it that much, but a lot of people consider the regular Verbena bonariensis to be a bit of a thug because it reseeds a lot. I'm not exp I think that's in a little bit warmer zone than my zone five. It doesn't do it as much in this zone. Um, it's it's got a lot more flowers packed on it than the, than the typical verbena bonariensis. But what I love the most about this is that it's got this sort of airy structure. So I've got it relatively, as you can see, towards the front of this border. And it has been blooming nonstop. I haven't deadheaded it at all. It's been blooming nonstop all summer. And this is stop number one for every butterfly, bee, um, hummingbird moths we have, we've had on here. Um, Basically, almost every pollinator you can think of loves this plant. And we've got it planted probably three feet from where we sit um, at night. So we can just sit here like amongst all the bees and the butterflies and it's great. And they're all drawn here by this plant. I actually have this plant growing in two other places in the garden. Um, it's in the circle garden looking amazing. And I also have it in the window box. And it's looking absolutely beautiful there. Again, um, I haven't done anything to it. No deadheading, no nothing, and it just it just looks great all year. This is a, a, a star in the garden for sure. Okay, so I think my star of the year are um, some new plants to me this year. This is Hydrangea Serrata Tough Stuff. Um, these are all new plants this year. They bloomed. They came absolutely full of buds. They bloomed. The most beautiful blue color even bluer than this is actually all of these back here these sort of pinkish blooms these have all faded i'm leaving them on there i haven't deadheaded it yet um, because i just think they're kind of pretty on there but it actually sent up a few new flowers so i'm actually going to get two blooms out of brand new plants this year um, so what you need to know about this plant though is that the flowers will go either pink or blue depending on your soil we have very alkaline soil here so I'm going to have to really, um, I'm going to have to really work on amending the soil to try to get those blooms to stay blue, which I would like to do. In fact, this bloom, which is more purpley, um, you can already tell it's being affected by the pH of our soil because um, they were even bluer the first time they bloomed. Um, there, this is a lower growing hydrangea um, and they have these sort of lace caps and by far my favorite plant in the garden right now. I'm trying not to get too excited about it because I could go out and plant these everywhere. Love it. Um, so this is one to look for. That's hydrangea tough stuff or tiny tough stuff, depending on how big you want to grow. Oh, by the way, so by the way, this blooms on old wood and new wood, and I have found it to be bud hardy in our zone five garden. I know that there's a lot of concern about that. That's why it's called tough stuff, folks, because it's tough and I am thrilled with this plant. Okay, so the last plant that I wanted to show you is this thing that looks like a tree behind me. This is Aurelia Silver Umbrella. It's a grafted Aurelia. I first read about this plant on Margaret Roach's blog, Away to Garden, and I'll link to that, uh, to that article. I believe I bought it from Broken Arrow Nursery because it's the only place I could find it. Um, I think it's, it's three years old now. It's either three or four years old. I think it's three. Um, and this year it actually like did exactly what I was envisioning. And I, you know, sometimes you plant these things and you have hopes that they will turn into what you envision them. And sometimes that just doesn't happen. Uh, in this case, it, it did exactly what I was hoping. Um, I love these. I love that it's got these sort of bare stems down here. Um, so that it's open down here so I can have the um, incredible hydrangea and a couple of a little bit beaten down hostas here and some lamium growing and some ferns growing in this tiny little shade corner. Uh, and so I just love that it's kind of an umbrella over this whole thing, which of course is part of its name. Um, 
the only thing to be aware of with with this plant is that because it's grafted it has a tendency to send out shoots because um, it's grafted onto a regular green aurelia which i believe is called the devil's walking stick because it is absolutely covered in thorns and there are some small thorns on this plant so you don't really want to be too close to it and um i've and so what you want to do if you see those green shoots is cut them off right away and I have done that, except what I found out is that it's sending out green shoots because I found earlier today, there's a few green plants back there and I'm gonna have to make sure to cut those out, dig those out because A, I don't want those, to, it's a very aggressive plant. I don't want it taking over. Um, and you just wanna make sure that you don't lose the variegation. If you let the green take over, if you send up shoots, you'll top will die out, you'll lose the variegated part, which is the part you want. And you'll just end up with this thorny green kind of thug. So I have to get back there and do a little pruning, but this couldn't be any better. And I wanna show you the best part about this, which is the view from on top of it. So here's the view of this Aurelia from the deck. What I love about this is that I wanted something that you could just kind of see. Our deck is, is really quite high. We've got a high foundation. So this deck is level with our first floor, um, but it's high. So I just wanted something that, that kind of stopped your eyes, something to sort of draw your eye this way on the deck. And this has done this perfectly. Like I said, it just turned out great. First of all, I forgot to mention that I love the layered effect here. I love plants that have that sort of cake layer thing going on. But the best part is that now you're absolutely eye level with the flowers, which are, are just starting now. There's just little buds there now. Um, those will bloom soon. And when they do bloom, every bee from miles around will come to find them. Bees go nuts for those things. So it's just cool. You're right there, you're right on top of it. And um, this is one of those plants that just kind of draws people in. Everybody who comes over says, oh, what is that? It's just kind of a nice way to um, add a little bit of a feeling of closure around the deck without making it feel closed in, if that makes any sense. Um, beyond this is sort of a wooded area. So this sort of also delineates kind of the difference between sort of the cultivated part of the yard and kind of the wilder part of the yard. So Again, um, this plant's a little bit hard to find. Um, it's worth seeking out and it was expensive. Um, obviously it's grown, I'd pay that, that price and then some for it because it's, it's grown quickly, it's grown well, and it was the perfect plant for this spot. So those are three plants that are doing great in my garden this year. Let me know what's doing great in yours. Thanks for watching, see you soon, bye-bye. new wood this year. Um, the old wood um, blooms are, are you going to sneeze? What's wrong? <laughs>